the real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Visit rsrhomescout.com, rsrhomescout.com. Graphs to show this is not a housing bubble with all the headlines and buzz in the media. Some consumers believe the market is in a housing bubble. As the housing market shifts, you may be wondering what will happen next. It's only natural for concerns to creep in that it could be a repeat of what took place in 2008. The good news is there's concrete data to show why this is nothing like the last time. There's a shortage of homes on the market today, not a surplus. The supply of inventory needed to sustain a normal real estate market is approximately six months. Anything more than that is an overabundance and will cause prices to depreciate. Anything less than that is a shortage and will lead to continued price appreciation. For historical content, there were too many homes for sale during the housing crisis, many of which were short sales and foreclosures, and that caused prices to tumble. Today, supply is growing, but there's still a shortage of inventory available. First graph I'm going to show you if you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, any of our socials, or the ABC News and Talk AM 1490 video feed is a graph from the National Association of Realtors to show how this time compares to the crash. Today, unsold inventory sits at a three-month supply at the current sales pace, and that's a misleading number. One of the reasons inventory is still low is because of sustained underbuilding. When you couple that with ongoing buyer demand as millennials age into their peak home buying years, it continues to put upward pressure on home prices. That limited supply compared to buyer demand is why experts forecast home prices won't fall. We're looking at a three-month supply of homes on the market. Why do I say that that's a misleading number? Because 51% of them are already under contract. See, if there's a property on the market and it's under contract, it still shows as being on the market because it's not sold yet. It hasn't closed yet. There still could be reasons that the, the, the transaction does not finalize. So it stays as a pending open trans, opened uh, listing until it's closed. 51% of the properties on the market right now, and we're 40% below normal numbers in 2019, 51% are still are, are under contract. Mortgage standards were much more relaxed during the crash. <laughs> yeah, if you could fog a mirror, you got a loan. That's the way it was. During the lead up to the housing crisis, it was much easier to get a home loan than it is today. The graph shows showcases data on the Mortgage Credit Availability Index from the Mortgage Bankers Association. The higher the number, the easier it is to get a mortgage. If we look back during the housing bubble, 868.7 was the number. Today, it's 119.6. Uh, if my math is right, is that about 15%, uh, about 80, 85% below where it was? Running up to 2006, banks were creating artificial demand by lowering lending standards and making it easy for just about anyone to qualify for a home loan or refinance their current home. Back then, lending institutions took on a much greater risk in both the person and the mortgage products offered. That led to mass defaults, foreclosures, and falling prices. Today, things are different, and purchasers face much higher standards from mortgage companies. Mark Fleming, chief economist at First American, says, quote, credit standards tightened in recent months due to increasing economic uncertainty and monetary policy tightening, unquote. Stricter standards like there are today help prevent a risk of a rash of foreclosures like there was last time. Speaking of foreclosures, the foreclosure volume is nothing like it was during the crash. The most obvious difference is the number of homeowners that were facing foreclosure after the housing bubble. Foreclosure activity has been on the way down since the crash because buyers today are more qualified and less likely to default on their loans. Next graph, Adam Data Solutions helps us with this story showing us that in 2009 to 2010, 2.9 million properties in foreclosure. Today's 151,000 as of the end of 2021. Why? Because the average debt on a property right now, the loan to value right now is 42%. That means there's 58% equity. Why would somebody let their property go if you've got 58% equity? In addition, Homeowners today are equity rich, like I just said, not tapped out in the run up to the housing bubble. Some homeowners were using their homes as a personal ATM. Many immediately withdrew their equity once it built up when the home values began to fall. Homeowners just found themselves in a negative equity situation and just said, adios, I'm out of here. 
Today, prices have risen nicely over the last few years, and that's given homeowners an equity boost, according to Black Knight. Bottom line, if you're worried about this making sense to, to talk in your situation, we've got the numbers for every zip code in the United States. Give us a call at 800-306-1990. And as always, I ask you, if you have any friends, family, or coworkers looking to buy, sell, or borrow on real estate, can I count on you to introduce them to me? That is the real-time real estate segment brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Segal Radio. Visit rsrhomescout.com, rsrhomescout.com.